The atmosphere is electric inside of Bud Walton Arena. And 12th ranked Arkansas looking to build on some momentum they picked up last week. They welcome in the defending national champion, Oklahoma Sooners. Alongside a former Razorback, Sidney Liverhurt, I'm Josh Haley. We welcome you to Fayetteville. This place is rocking. It's already got a postseason feel to it. Yeah, it is crazy in here. And this is exactly where Regionals is going to be hosted in Bud Walton Arena. So both teams need to take this atmosphere in and use it going into postseason. Well, Arkansas certainly built some momentum last week, particularly on the beam. Yeah, Coach Weaver said that this is one of the most consistent teams training on beam, and she just hasn't seen that. But last week, they finally figured out how to do their normal. She said they should feel easy and calm, and that's exactly what they they did with this fire beam rotation program record 49 575 and they're gonna need to do that again to be close tonight impressive numbers last week and hoping to maybe shatter some more records here today meanwhile for the Oklahoma Sooners the numbers just continue to be off the charts including a new NCAA record NQS yeah to have an NQS of 198 in itself is already incredible a 198 42 is just unheard of and this team can get better so I'm so excited to watch them tonight time to introduce you to the third member of our crew down on the floor Emerson Burris after another program record last week for Arkansas Senior Jensen Scalzo wrapped up the team huddle by saying we can still do better and we have two more opportunities to do that in our house. That's exactly what the gym backs are trying to do tonight in Bud Walton. And boy, did the Hogs bring the energy here. I sat down with Holly Swaney, who gave me a little insight on their mindset going into competing against number one Oklahoma. She told me nothing changes no matter who we're competing against, but we just need to trust each other. Thanks, Emerson. Seems like a good plan to me. If you're all joined together and everybody's on the same page, you got each other's backs, that's what you got to have this time of year. But you would know as good as anybody, <laughs> Sydney. Yeah, it's important to have that team chemistry and camaraderie. And I know both coaches mentioned that's what they're really focusing in on on these last couple meets and going into postseason. And clearly, both teams have had each other's backs through adversity, through the good times. So if they can keep repeating that, they're both going to go very far in the postseason. Not only Bud Walton Arena creating a special atmosphere, but it's a special night as well for the Arkansas Gymnastics Program, Women's Empowerment Night, and redubbed Empow Her, and those special Leos for the Razorbacks this evening. Pretty sharp. I like them. They're very sporty, very Arkansas. I love it. Arkansas and OU will soon to be conference mates as OU and Texas will join the SEC this coming academic year. And so this will become a regular conference meet in some sense if the schedule all lines up. Jordan Weaver, fifth year as the head coach, and her program continues to reach new heights, and they don't feel like they're done yet this year. No, they said they have a lot of goals to still beat. Yes, they've broken team records, they've broken school records, um, but they still have a lot more to focus on, and hopefully tonight they can build on that so they can, like I said, I keep repeating myself, but they want to build going into postseason so they can be a ranked seed and have a chance to make it to nationals this year. There's the vault lineup for Coach Weaver. Cami Weaver will lead things off. Two event titles on vault already this year. Arkansas ranks 12th in the nation in this rotation. We asked Coach Weaver what she wanted to see from her team when it came to the vault here tonight. She said big and beautiful plus more control on the landing. So that equals beautiful control. That's what the Razorbacks are looking for. Very nice, Ruchenko full. You saw that hot back. That's one thing they're going to really need tonight to keep this meet close is dialing in on those landings. Cami typically can stick it, but the energy in here, like we said, they need to learn to feed off that energy, control their landings. So great start, but we're going to need some sticks for them to, to keep it close. For Oklahoma on the bars, it'll be Danny Sievers. The lineup for head coach KJ Kindler, who's in her 18th year. She's a very solid leadoff. She has scored a 9.975 before, so having that in your leadoff spot is very impressive. 
a Maloney into a pack. Keeps those legs nice and tight. Very nice finishing that pirouette in handstand. Her toe point is so beautiful. Just got to finish that dismount. Stuck full in. That looks carbon copy every single week, and that's exactly what you want in the lineup spot. Someone that's going to hit like that every single time. And here's that dismount again, a full in. She makes it look so easy. Chest up, no deduction. Very nicely done. That's going to be a huge score to start it off for the Sooners. Well, that's pretty much what it's been for Sievers, who's got them on the right foot, averaging a 9-9 over the last three meets on bars. And that should be right in line, and maybe, who knows? Very nice retrank pull from Priscilla. Again, another hop. They really need to start focusing in on those landings, but it's nice to see her back in lineup. She was out last week with a little bit of a sickness bug going around, so it's nice to see her back, and they're, they're definitely going to need her to be competitive. Brings us to Kat Lavasser on the bars. Career high 9975 against Michigan earlier this month. I think you could almost say for almost every single person in this lineup that their career high is a 9975 or a 10, which is just insane. Beautiful first hands and even holds it. Very nice to catch it. And she's swinging with such control. She, you can tell she's not rushing it. Hitting those handstands, taking her time. Very nice. Giant fool. Open double tuck. <laughs> and another stick. Wow. I, I couldn't find a deduction in that routine. Take a look at it again. Look how she just holds that handstand position on everything. The bail. Toe point throughout. That looks like a warm-up turn for her. <laughs> so that was very nice. First stop went 9-9, so I'm thinking that's going to build off of that score. Huge retangle pull. Wow. <laughs> that is what she's capable of. She's gone, she's gotten the perfect 9-9-5 in her career. Got shorted on it this year. I've talked about it before. That should be a 9-9-5. That was incredible. And you could tell she saw the landing the whole time. Yeah, the perfect 995 for a Yurchenko full came last year at Kentucky. That is exactly what they needed to, to build off of. Very nice first handstand. Huge Ray, very dynamic. And you can tell she's really attacking the bar, going for those positions. Maybe a slight little leg separation if I'm being picky on that pack. The judges might not be able to see it. They are sitting at a different angle than we are. Just gearing up for that double A dismount. And another stick. It is like they have glue on their feet. They are not moving on any of these dismounts. Well, Sievers let it off on Barnes with a 9-9, and then Lavasser with a 9-9-2-5. Well, there's the vault for Leah Smith, 9-9-2-5. I'm not a judge, but 9-9-5 <laughs> in my head. Another very nice Shevchenko pull. They don't bring necessarily the difficult vault out like you're going to see with Oklahoma, but they have very clean Yurchenko pulls. But like I said, they are hurting themselves a little bit, not getting those sticks. Leah had a beautiful one. Frankie is capable of it. She just needs to calm down a little bit. I know it's fine. It's your home meet, but you got to dial it in to not give those tenths away when you don't have those 10 0 start values. Reagan Smith, the Big 12 co-gymnast of the week for the third time. 
Another very nice, very big raid to a pack. Wow, that was very cleanly done. Sometimes she loses form a little bit going into that pack, but so far so good. Holds that last handstand. Double A. Holds the stick, very nice. She has improved that dismount so much over her career at Oklahoma. She used to pike it down a little bit, kind of lose shape, but that was one of her better double A's that I've seen. Very nice job by Reagan. Haley Klein, a career 9.875 best score for her on vault. She keeps getting better, and she's bringing that difficulty here that I was just talking about. Hopefully, she can dial it in. Very nicely done, one and a half. Like I said, that is a 10.0 star value. So she has a little bit of an up compared to the 9.95 vaults we just saw. Still, you want to dial in those landings, but she has improved on that vault every single week. So it's nice to see, and I think she'll find that landing by the time she needs to find it in postseason. Oklahoma ranks number one in bars in the country, and multiple times this year where all six in the lineup have been at least a 9-9. This is Audrey Davis, and I, this is a routine I've been most excited to watch all night. It comes in the first rotation. A huge Jaeger to pack. She has been shorted on getting a 10 over her career so many times. She finally got it this past week, but so far so good. Very difficult into her dismount. Stuck landing, that could be another 10. She does the same routine every single week. And it just opened the floodgates this past week, getting her 10. So hopefully we'll continue to see her get 10s on this bar routine. Just the difficulty that she brings, the form. She, you could tell she was looking for that landing and maybe they'll throw the 10. Let's hope they're throwing the 10 here. Yeah, it seemed like it was just a big sigh of relief for the rest of the program for her because they knew that she had so many routines in the past that were more than capable. Wow. Just a tiny hop there. That was very nicely done by Lauren Williams. When she gets that stick, that will be a 10. I am calling it now. Like you said, just a tiny little hop, but she has so improved her form and everything on it. That might be her best vault she's done all year. Very nicely done. And she's done some doozies. Five event titles on vault this year, easily the most on the team for Lauren Williams, who's a top 15 vaulter in the country. And another 9975 for Audrey Davis. That's just apparently that's what they want to give her. But now Jordan Bowers, she is capable of getting a 10 on this event as well. She is a very solid all-arounder for them, and her form is one of those, those lines that she has on bars are beautiful. Very nice last handstand. They just hold those handstands. Full in. Slight little foot movement on the end. That won't be a 10 tonight, but very, very good rotation for OU to start off. That's exactly what they want to do tonight. Yeah, that's what KJ Kindler said is start well and with passion and they've certainly done that. Dakota Essen prize in an exhibition vault. <laughs> Much better. She had a kind of scary landing last week against Mizzou and lineup on her one and a half. Almost looked like she hyperextended her knee. So take her out of lineup, let her refresh. Very nice to see her over rotate and not try to go too hard for the stick. So that'll be helpful going in to the end of season. For Oklahoma, Malin Sullivan, an exhibition on bars. Very nice first handstand to Maloney. Immediate pack. 
The amplitude on that pack was beautiful. Wow, she finished that pirouette right where you wanted in handstand. <laughs> Another very nice handstand. She is really going for it. Full in to a stick. Wow. That will definitely best her career high of a 9-8. That was very, very nicely done. Well, an impressive first rotation for OU on the bars, 49.6. Arkansas at 49.35 on the vault. We'll be back to a rowdy Bud Walton Arena in a moment. Fifth annual Women's Empowerment Night at Arkansas Gymnastics. And for the two head coaches, they were pretty clear on, uh, they've had a lot of people empower them, but for Jordan Weaver, the Arkansas head coach, it was Miss Val, the legendary coach at UCLA, and Elaine Heber, who gave OU coach KJ Kindler her very first chance at a head coaching position. Josh Haley and Sydney Limmer hurt with you, and who was, what empowered you growing up? Yeah, so for Women's Empowerment Meet, I have to honor my coach, Courtney McCool Griffith. Uh, she was the very first Olympics I remember watching, but she's truly the reason I wanted to go compete in college. I remember watching her. Um, and then I got lucky enough that she ended up being my college coach for the end of my career. Um, she helped me get through a major injury and really finishing out my career strong. So I owe a lot of why I am here today because of her. Well, let's check in on the sidelines with Emerson Burris. And Emerson, who empowered you? Jordan Betts is a 2015 Arkansas graduate from the broadcast journalism program. She's now become an older sister figure, a best friend. She's the head of the NIL deals at Charlie Hustle T-shirt company in Kansas City. And she just pushes me to be not only the best broadcaster, but the best version of myself, the best woman I can be. And I sat down with Reese Drotar this week to get the team's thoughts on the Empower Her night, and Reese Schroeder told me, we're here to inspire all of the little girls in the stands and watching us on TV to pursue their dreams and passions. All right, thanks, Emerson. A great night here in Fayetteville inside of Bud Walton Arena, Women's Empowerment Night. Back for rotation two in a moment. Back in Fayetteville as we get set for rotation number two. Oklahoma off to a good start. That's gonna make the coaching staff. 18th year leader, KJ Kindler, very happy. Six national titles. And when you think they can't reach new heights, then they go in this past week, a new NCAA record in QS. Yeah, she truly is one of the greatest coaches of all time. And I, when we talked to her, I even said, how do you do it? That's all I wanted to know. How do you repeatedly get better with this team week after week? And, you know, she's very humble. She didn't want to say how. She didn't want to give away too many secrets. But it's just so impressive that they're able to produce week after week. Especially with so many different options for that lineup. And their focus this week on chemistry and team camaraderie. And both of these coaches have a lot of depth and the ability to write the lineup. But you look at those vault leaders, and uh, for Oklahoma, the NQS in the vault, 49-505. They want to continue the momentum that they picked up on bars. And the way Coach Kindler put it, we want to be big when it comes to the ball. You've performed in front of some rowdy environments. Is it after that first rotation when you finally get to exhale <laughs> and catch your breath again? Yeah, just a little bit, especially I competed vault. So it was always kind of hard to dial in those landings when you're so pumped up, especially to have a crowd like this in your home crowd. Uh, it, it, it's insane. So after the first event's over, you can kind of breathe. Usually the team, you know, comes together and it's like, all right, let's settle in. Um, and that's exactly what I think we're going to see here. Very nice, Chenko one and a half by Faith. You could tell she was a little short on that landing, so she had to take a hop back. If anything, you want to be able to take a hop forward. You want that over rotation, which would mean you'd have a big vault like KJ Kindler is looking for. So she was trying a little too hard to focus on that landing, but since it's a 10-0 start, it'll still be a very good score. Well, Faith Torres coming off of a career high 995 last Sunday.
Good first handstand to Ray. Very nicely done. Pack, very nice. Sometimes she'll lose form on that too. She had a little bit of difficulty last week against Mizzou on that pirouette, but looked much better tonight. She's really zoning in on these little details. Just as double A dismount. Hop back. Great start, much improved from her last week. Callie's such a consistent lead off for them. That double A, like I said, just piked her in her hips a little bit. So she didn't keep that flat position. So she had to take that hop back. Still should be a good score and a good start for the Hawks. One event title this year for Sweeney on bars. There's Kira Wells. Wow. She got such a nice block off that table. And when I say block, it means that little pop that you see when they change direction and go up. So you can see right here, she goes straight up. Very nicely done. And a one and a half, you have a blind landing. So it's a lot harder to see where you're gonna land. So sometimes if you move your head forward too quickly, you're gonna have to take that hop like she did. But when they stick it, it is incredible. <laughs> Coach Jordan Weber said she's looking for those small minor details to kind of be sharpened up a little bit this week. The pointed feet you see there. And she did rush that handstand a little bit going into her bail to the low bar. And might have been a little short on that last one too. She just rushing it a little bit in her head. But makes up for it with the dismount. Good job, that's exactly what they need. And hopefully that'll start a train of sticks for this Razorback bar rotation. See right there, she was dialed in. Arkansas coming off a 49-3 at Missouri last weekend. They know they're capable of much more than that. And that might open the floodgates for it. And watch out for this ball. If she sticks it, this can go 10. Again, another little short vault. You can tell they're almost going too hard for these sticks. They know they're capable of doing it, but they're, they're going too short because they're trying to think about the stick too early. You see, she takes that step back, so that will be a deduction. But since they start from a 10-0, like I said, they have a little bit of an advantage against Arkansas's vault rotation. Brings up Reese Drotar. Picked up a title on bars against Auburn back in January. SEC All-Freshman Team selection from a year ago who just continues to get better. Reese is one of my favorite bar workers, bar swingers. She's so tall, but she makes bars look so easy. And when she hits, the, I don't know what they take. Again, I'm not a judge, but when she hits, it's hard to take anything. Very nice. Shaposh, media bail, wow, straight to the handstand. Very nicely done. You can tell she's not rushing. She's taking her time, and she can get this landing. This will be huge. Ah, uh, just some little feet shuffles in place. But still, very nicely done. See that dismount, how long she is, is so pretty. And she just rushed it a little bit. She's trying to keep that hold. This year, you have to hold your sticks for at least one second. So the college salute is no longer. Kat Lavasser, who's got a tender credit in her career. Man, she has been dialed in on that ball this year. And honestly, I think that she should have more tens. She's gone 997 on that, 9975 on that vault so many times. Won't be a 10 tonight, but very, very pretty one and a half. Turn our attention to Jensen Scalzo for the Razorbacks. Beautiful Jaeger to bail. That looked like one of her better ones she's done. She really turned it over so she was able to get into that bail properly. 
Beautiful last handstand. She needs to get that stick. And she does. Wow. <laughs> she almost looked like she was surprised herself that she had it, but I think Bud Walton is magic for Jensen. I think she sticks that every single time here in Bud. That was very nicely done. Wow, just dials it in. I love her game face. That was phenomenal. Could be the second 9-9 of the year for Scalzo on bars. We'll wait and see. Hannah Scheibel, top 15 vaulter in the nation. For handspring front pike half. She does a different vault than you typically see. She does that front handspring entry. But that's still out of a 10, and it's very, very difficult to do. Coach Kindler said she's really improved. She went through a phase of figuring out she's a freshman, so you have to figure out that freshman year, and she's finally started to figure out that vault. That was very nicely done. Beautiful. Toe on toe off to Ray. Wow, the height that she just got on that was huge. Very nicely done. Again, she was out sick last week, so it's nice to see her back in the lineups. So far, so good on this bar routine. Double A. Little hop, trying to hold that one second. And that's a routine they're really going to need in the postseason. So it is nice to see her back when she dials it in. That's going to go big for the Razorbacks. That lineup's been pretty consistent for Coach Weber and her staff on bars with Park being in that fifth spot, except for, like you mentioned last week, being out. But right back there this evening. Audrey Davis tying her season high with a 9.85 last time. Ava Siegfeld on a change in the lineup. Very nice one and a half. She had really good distance on that vault. She kind of finished that half turn a little late, but that kind of caused that hop forward. But that's going to be very nice to have in lineup. If they need to rest anyone, if they just need to switch it up like Oklahoma does, that'll be nice to be able to do that. Maddie Jones to round out bars for the gym backs. Maddie went 9925 on this last week. She has oh. I was going to say she has very beautiful bars and she has kind of gone in an up and down uh, fashion this season when it comes to her routines. Seemed like she was just a little too far, didn't have that dowel over, which means part of her grip that allows you to hold on to the bar. Let's see if they're gonna have her. Yeah, she's just going to continue her team from where she fell as unfortunate. So they will be dropping her score. Coming off her two best outings of the year, including a Career high, 9.95. This is a beautiful way to end this routine. Double A. She's definitely going to be disappointed. Like you said, she just came off of that 9.925, and she knows what she's capable of now. But sometimes you have to go through that adversity to really figure out how to dial it in. kind of a pride and character moment, isn't it? To say, you know, you could easily say, well, we're just going to drop that and move on, but she gets right back up and kind of sends a message to everybody. Yep, and then it's important because if there would have been another fall in the lineup, she's going to have to hit the routine so it doesn't count as much. Very nice, Yurchenko full from Sheridan. 
She doesn't bring the difficulty that Oklahoma's lineup typically does, but like I said, it's nice to have those Yurchenko fools that are clean and that can still score just as big as your one and a half. 49-5-2-5 is what Oklahoma finishes with on vault. I'm excited to see Leah on bars. I think the last time she competed at bars was her freshman year, so a few years ago. Um, and she's been training really consistently in the gym, trying to crack that lineup, but they also want to keep her healthy because she's such a mainstay in the other two. So I'm really excited to see her do this bar routine today. And she's going to be challenged a little bit too with the judges having to figure out what to do after a fall. <laughs> Nice first handstand, toe on, toe off to a Maloney. Nicely done. Bail. So far, so good. Nice last handstand, just the dismount left. Double A. With a stick, wow! That is a bar routine that they're gonna wanna put in their lineup. <laughs> Unfortunately, they don't get to count it tonight. It would have been nice to have that score in the lineup, but wow, what a good job by Leah. Beautiful stick, and yeah, that's definitely gonna give you some options here coming <laughs> yeah. in with the postseason rapidly approaching. Let's check in on the sidelines. Emerson Burris is with OU coach KJ Kindler. Coach, you said you wanted to see your team bring the fire and momentum this week. Where are you seeing that in these first two events? Yeah, I mean, super pleased with our landings on bars, five out of six. That was phenomenal. And then our, our exhibition, Mei Lin, she finally stuck her dismount. That was very exciting for us. Um, vault improved across the board. Better landings, better amplitude. Just really happy with that. What do you want to see going forward in these last two events? I mean, just keep the momentum. Do what we always do in the gym. Yes. Thanks so much, Thank Coach. You. Guys, back to you. All right, thanks, Emerson. Yep, I can imagine she would be pleased with what she's seeing so far. Our team performing well in the first two events. Two more to go, and lots of energy left to unpack here inside of Bud Walton Arena. Championship is going to be a great one yet again in New Orleans. You look at the headlines from the week. Florida clinching the outright regular season title, and they'll look to capture their third consecutive SEC championship later this month. A new record for the Razorbacks, not only in beam, but overall. And a couple of tens from Kentucky. So a lot of teams in the SEC making some noise right towards the end of the year. Yeah, it's still a fight for that evening session at SECs. Arkansas is fighting for it with Kentucky, with Mizzou, all of the teams. And it's a super competitive year. I'm really excited to see how it turns out. But that's why you have to make sure all these meets matter. They count. You can't give up anything. Electrifying performance on the beam last week at Mizzou for the Razorbacks. That's where they'll be when we come back for rotation number three and OU will take the floor exercise and try to shine as Coach Kindler put it. Back to Northwest Arkansas after this. Well, there's where we stand after the first rotation. You look at what OU did on the bars, and they followed that up five different nine nines or better on the vault. That's insane. And that just shows how much dip they have. It wasn't even their normal rotation and lineup that they have. And yeah, they're just insane. <laughs> well, the season highs for these two teams, you look at Oklahoma all over the place. Five of the top seven overall scores this year in college gymnastics. LSU has put together some really nice meets as well though, and they'll certainly be a threat to challenge Florida for the SEC title when that time comes. And Arkansas coming off of a program record last weekend as well. Now it's fun to see this atmosphere inside of Bud Walton Arena, normally of course, Gymnastics meets are in Barnhill Arena, which the fans always show up well and a lot of energy there. But an NCAA regional is going to be here later this spring. And so this and also this coming Friday, 
couple of nice previews to see what the crowd looks like inside of Bud Walton. Yeah, it always makes me a little emotional seeing the crowd in Bud Walton. Um, throughout my career, we competed in Barnhill, and the fact that the sport and the love for it here at Arkansas has grown to this point where it fills up Bud Walton is incredible, and it's, it's awesome to see these girls get the recognition that they deserve for hard work, and it's going to be really, really fun regional too. Now the program continues to reach new heights. And for Jordan Weber, seeing her team pick up different records. You look at kind of the season comparison last year in the SEC slate and Arkansas already winning a, a program record number of meets in conference play. But those are some big time differences in the results. Yeah, she said, you know, they have a really, really strong culture this year, and they feel like everyone on the team is on board for what is important to this team. And that's clearly shown in these meets. They're, they're not just going out there to get a score. They're going out there to win and get a score. Um, so that is really awesome to see how adaptable this team is and how they've really, truly upgraded this year. Now their NQS coming in was a 197-335. National qualifying scores are basically compiled. You take your six best scores of the season, you throw out the top one, and three of those have to be meets on the road. And so for the Razorbacks, their lowest NQS score that's currently factoring in with those six is a 197-150. So still a couple of opportunities to best that and bring that NQS up a little bit higher. Standing lay lay, that is so difficult. And Calista is such an amazing leadoff. She honestly, I think, could anchor for almost any other team in the nation. And she is Arkansas's leadoff on beam. Shows you the depth, but it also shows you the trust that Coach Weber has in Calista to be that really important lead because she knows she's gonna go up there and go nine nine plus every single time. And she just looks like she has, has so much fun up there. That big smile doesn't even act like she's on the beam right now. Now yeah, the Honolulu native, the beam lead off every meet the last two years and even the majority of meets in her freshman year. And every meet she looks like she's getting more and more comfortable having fun up there. It's really been fun to watch her grow in this event and just the dismount left, round up one and a half, small step. Won't be the 9925 that she got at Mizzou, but Again, a very, very incredible leadoff. That standing Lele, she was a little off, you could tell, but she adjusted very quickly. It's hard to adjust on, on those four inches up there in a quick amount of time, but she did a great job. Good leadoff to start the rotation. Audrey Davis coming off a career high 995 last weekend. Handspring, front double full, dances right out of it. It's helpful to have a dance like that right out of it. It eliminates any possibility of a landing deduction. Not that she would have needed it, but that was very nicely done first pass. Another thing Coach Kindler talked about is having these girls have fun, have confidence, and shine and perform out there on the floor. Because it's hard to perform in front of an away crowd, especially at a, a venue like this. So far, so good for Audrey. Round up, one and a half, front full, very difficult. Again, dances out of it to eliminate that deduction. Very nicely done. Been nine, nine or better in five of the last six competitions. And she loves being that leadoff position. KJ Kindler plays around with the lineups a little bit, but when she goes in the line, first in lineup, she loves to shine and really start her team off strong. And that was a really, really good way to do it right there. Here's that front handspring, front double full, E difficulty, very, very nicely done. Dances right out of it, gives a little smirk to the judges. That's how you want to start a floor rotation.
Jones gonna... coming off that monster 9925 at Mizzou. Yeah, and it's going to be really important that she totally forgets about what happened on bars to go up here and hit a beam routine. Front aerial, back handspring, back handspring. Very nicely done. You could tell a little bit that she was off in that second back handspring. Kind of looked like sh her arms might have given, but there will be no deduction taken. She covered it up. Very nice. And I love seeing her breathe out there. You can tell she's breathing through her mouth. Because it's hard. All you want to think about is, now I can't mess up again on another event. But she is having no problems up there right now. Split jump, double stag. Very nicely done. That might have been one of the best double stag jumps I've seen her do this season. Sometimes she has difficulty getting that full 180, but that looked like no problems today. Just the front full dismount. To a stick. Wow, what a way to rebound after bars. <laughs> you could tell a sigh of relief there. Great job by Maddie Jones. Front aerial. You see right here. That left hand looked like it almost slipped on her second back handspring, but she didn't let it phase her. No wobbles and holds that landing. She should be very proud of herself after that routine. Nerves of steel. <laughs> Jones, when she made her first ever appearance on beam, she won the event back in January with a 9-9-0. If you're on beam for the first time, you are probably just going out there and just trying to do <laughs> yep. something that doesn't yes. draw too much attention to yourself. Yes. And she won the thing. That should be a testament to how calm, cool, and collected she is. Front lay, front Rudy, one and a half. And I love watching her, but I love watching Coach Kindler on the side watching her. She just smiles the whole routine. You can tell Belle's out there having so much fun. And I almost have to kind of laugh because that her floor music is the intro for the Arkansas girls. So they're all over here. You can't see dancing <laughs> along to her floor routine. It's awesome. Second pass, round up by handspring, double tuck. Very nicely done. I think she kept it in bounds. She looked like she was a little close to being out of bounds, but she had a beautiful set on that double tuck, really took it up. And she's definitely performing and shining out there like Coach Finler once. Trying to play it up to the student section right there. Such half full, full, nicely done. Very nice routine for Bell. We're gonna look right here. This round up double tuck. Look like she might have been a little close to that line. I can't tell she had her heel down. If she had her heel down, then that would be considered out of bounds. That'll be a one tenth deduction. But if she kept her heel up and her foot was just on the line, there'll be no deduction. I don't think I saw the judge raise their hand could be wrong, I didn't see it, so might not count. She might get lucky if that kept her out of bounds. I'm very interested in watching this routine from Callie. She's been in and out of beam lineup, really trying to work on that consistency. Cat leap, front aerial. Nicely done. You can see she was off a little bit there. That front foot looked like it didn't come all the way down. Didn't look like she's full rotated, but she saved from having a massive bobble. Handspring layout step out, but no problems there. Didn't let that little bobble phase her. Sophomore from Belmont, North Carolina. Last four times she's been in the lineup on beam. She's improved from the previous meet. Trying to do that again here. Very nice leaps there. You can tell she's really zoned in on the beam right now. It's gonna give a little bit of a smile. You can tell she's trying to not look too serious up there. Just the disavant back handspring to one and a half. Very, very nice routine for Pally. Here's that series, nice form throughout. 
like I said, no issues there. And just the dismount, let's see if she gets that stick round up, or back handspring one and a half. Slight little bobble to the right. They will probably take a slight deduction there. But again, good routine to see her back in lineup and see that confidence build from her. And we get a Taylor Swift routine from Reagan Smith. A lot of people, I'm sure, out there are really excited for this one. Right, back handspring, double tuck, open double tuck. That is very difficult to do. She doesn't grab her legs. Of all the perfect tens she has, does not have one on floor. It's been oh so close. Career high of 9.975. And a one and a half front lay. Dances right out of it. And she has such pretty movement on the floor. She's a, definitely a shorter gymnast, but she really plays it off with the dance that you can't tell she has very graceful lines, toe point throughout. I don't know if there's such thing as a shorter gymnast. <laughs> she's just, she's a typical gymnast height. <laughs> Switch side, we'll full. Senior Big from amplitude. Louisville, Texas goes five foot one. So we're the same height. So I guess <laughs> she's not that short. <laughs> Not a big handspring. Double pike to end it. Nicely done. Doesn't move that front foot. No deduction there. And she gets bonus for having a double flip in her last pass. That was a great routine from Reagan. Like I said, doesn't move that foot at all. Really, really fun dance. Nicely done. Great routine from Reagan. She should be happy with that one. Beautiful. Cami is such a stud on beam. Straddle, double stag, little off, covers it up. But when she's zoned in, she can go 995 easily. Ariel, unfortunate big bobble there. Had to lift her leg, so that's going to be an extra deduction. Sometimes she gets ahead of herself. You can tell when she's really focused and calm on the beam. And right now, she looks like she might be rushing it just a little bit. You saw that score come across for Sweeney of 9875. That's a new season high. Nice finish to the routine. You can tell she's very hard on herself. That side aerial has caused her a little bit of issue throughout this year. It is a new skill in her beam routine. So once she really figures that out mentally, she'll score huge on beam. You see right there, she just rushes it. I feel like she gets ahead of herself, like I said, and she just needs to calm down. She's so capable on beam. OU coach KJ Kindler said she was looking forward to seeing her team shine in front of this big audience in this big atmosphere. So they were kind of embracing this rowdy atmosphere. Yeah, she said Kat is a sleeper on her team. That sh this is her first year doing all around, and she has been such a stud for them. Round up by handspring, full in. Very nicely done. is very different music. I really, I like it. It's a change up from, you know, the fast beat motion. She really plays into every single beat of this routine. Switch side. Straddle half Shushanova. Unique leap. My favorite part about Flora in general in college is watching the teammates do it alongside her on the side. <laughs> Round off one and a half, front half to straddle jump, takes that 
Shuttle jump right up. Very nicely done. Great routine from Kat. Very unique, very different. I like, I like the change up, like I said, of the music. This is her full in. She might have been a little crunchy. And when I mean crunchy, that her arms are a little bit in that back handspring. But she looked like no problem. And then that last pass, so nicely done. Haley Klein, I, it's hard for me, me to even want to commentate. I love this beam routine. Ariel, layout step out, very good save. She was way off on that Ariel going into layout. Had the slight bobble, but that could have been right off the beam. Switch leap, split jump. That flight series, that layout, or that Ariel layout is so much bonus that she has a really, really quick routine. She really only has to do that, her leap, a turn, and then get off the beam, which some people like, and I know Haley for a fact said, I just want to get up there and get off the beam. <laughs> so, but she does it so nicely. Well, she came off with a career high 9.925 last weekend. On a one and a half, small little hop. Again, she <laughs> breathed a sigh of relief a little bit, because you could tell that aerial from this angle, she might not, you could tell she had that bobble, but from the back angle, she was really crooked. So to be able to bring that back as a freshman is impressive. She's a gamer and you can clearly see that. <laughs> She's happy with that routine. Faith Torres on floor. It's been total consistency for one of the top 10 in the nation on this event. Seven straight meets with a 9-9 nine, nine or better. And I love watching Faith tumble. Round of the handspring, double layout, huge. Faith did elite for a little bit prior to coming to OU and she was on those national stages and her tumbling was just something everyone always looked forward to. And she's really brought it to college. It's so fun for her to really come to college. It's much different than elite uh, and hit those routines and be so consistent only as a sophomore for Oklahoma. Tell she's breathing throughout. Tershite, half to wolf full, hits that full 180. Just that last pass, front through to double tuck. Nice job. Great routine from Faith. <laughs> that first pass, that round of back handspring, double layout, just huge, no problem though. And then that front through to double tuck, very difficult combination pass. I would like to see her toes point a little bit more throughout, but I'm being picky. She should be happy with that. done handspring handspring layout triple series very difficult to do she had a 9-9 last week so she finally hit a routine that she felt she was capable of she is an all-american on beam switch leap split jump she almost laughed at herself there you can tell she's a little off but didn't let it get to her and jordan weaver was singing her praises saying she's really been stepping up And they incorporated a little hawk call into her beam routine. I love it. <laughs> Round off one and a half. Small hop. That was another really, really good routine from Serena. It's been nice to watch her improve week after week here. She started off, I believe, with the fall here. So see her go throughout the season and just improve. Really danced off what could have been a big bobble. And then that round off one and a half, just the smallest hop. 
but that was a great routine. Bowers has turned in a 10 before on the floor. Coming off a 9.95 last weekend in that quad down at Denton, Texas. She'll be competing for a national championship on floor at the end of the year. And she was the national floor runner up last year. So like you said, she's capable of a 10 here. This is gonna be a treat for everyone. For handspring, front double full, front tuck. Very difficult combination. And I love watching her intensity on the floor. A little bit more serious than you're used to in a college routine. She reminds me a lot of a couple different former Oklahoma gymnasts that really had that intense stare. Jade Lindsay is one that comes straight to mind when it comes to her dance. Round effect hands ring, double pike. You tell she had her chest down, maybe a slight, but she was able to really get it up, work out of it. But it was huge. Switch leap, switch half, full full. Beautiful leap combination. Wow. That was a stunning routine for Jordan. For a handspring, front double full, front tuck. That is a very difficult combo pass. And then here's that double pike. Sky rockets it. You could tell her chest was down just a little bit. I don't think the judges will take it. I'm being very picky, but her form throughout was beautiful. Lindup is another big score for OU on that event. And Scylla has gone 9975 on this event. So as a freshman, I'm excited to see this improve over the next three years. Handspring, lay, lay. Very nicely done, no issues there. But she can't get ahead of herself. She needs to stay dialed in. And if you hear the yelling, Jordan Bowers just went 10 on floor, so they didn't take what I thought they might. That was a beautiful routine for Jordan, and what a way to cap it off for Oklahoma. And Scylla, as a freshman, doing such a good job at staying focused with the screams. Like you said, they're really going to have to prepare for that in postseason. All It's going to be very loud, so as a freshman, she's not used to it, and she's doing a great job right now. Just the dismount. Ariel, back one and a half. Small step. Great job. Arkansas is going to round out Beam, finishing with a score higher than their NQS average coming in. At this point in the year, is that really what you're looking to do is say, you know, you don't have to go out and break a record every time, but let's continue to try to finish above the NQS. Yeah, you want to keep getting scores that are going to help increase your NQS more and more. You don't want to finish anything below. You want to be able to drop all of those high, low scores um, and just keep building so that you can keep going up in rankings. A 10 for Bowers, her first 10 of the year, but not of her career on floor. Round effect handspring, double tuck. Very, very nicely done for Hannah. Another very intense routine. Oklahoma has some really, really intense floor music and routines this year. They're always known for their unique choreography. <laughs> a 
great job for Hannah. See that first pass. Rudy to back layout, step out. And then that double tuck. <laughs> Very nicely done. Try to keep that front foot down, but that's a great exhibition routine to have in the lineup. Let's check in with Emerson Burris, who's with Arkansas head coach Jordan Weber. Coach, last week at Mizzou, you said you really wanted to work on the confidence of the team. Where are you seeing that tonight? Right, I mean, we're seeing it in a lot of places. You know um, you know, we're is. not trusting a few we're of the skills. We want to see a little more settled in, especially on this last event. Okay. But floor is what we do best, uh, so I'm excited for the last rotation. Tonight is the women's empowerment meet. What does it mean to have a platform like yours on a night like tonight? I mean, it means everything. I have the best job in the world, and the ability to not only empower these student athletes, but to allow them the platform to empower all the little girls sitting in the audience tonight and watching on TV, it's truly an honor. Thanks so much. Thank you. Guys. Thanks, Emerson. We close out rotation three with a perfect 10 from Jordan Bowers. First of the year, she'll be competing and looking for a national title. Dynasties in this sport that we love, but the field really, you, you have this OU team, the, the next question really kind of becomes who might challenge them, but if you take a look down memory lane, the dominance that the Georgia Bulldogs have had in the sport. National championship for Utah nine times over. UCLA with the legendary Miss Val and current Arkansas assistant Kyla Ross, of course. And these Oklahoma Sooners, six time national champs. The Florida Gators, not only three national championships, but they're looking to defend their SEC championship crown. And the Michigan Wolverines. Crowd is into it, they're all fired up. They're ready to see the gym backs show up and show out on the floor exercise. That's next. Moving into the final rotation here in Fayetteville, Arkansas and Oklahoma as the regular season starts to really wind down. And the Razorbacks will be in this same atmosphere this coming Friday when they take on Nebraska. It's a great time for this Jim Bax program in Fayetteville, seeing the way that this crowd has shown up inside of Bud Walton. Yeah, it is insane in here. It is packed for a Sunday afternoon. And like I said, it's so great to see how much this program has really grown over the last few years. Here's the lineup for Oklahoma as they head to beam. Top NQS in the country at a 49-7 NQS score. Coming off a 49-675 last weekend in Denton, Texas at the Texas Women's Invite. See Audrey Davis getting ready for beam, getting that pep talk from KJ Kindler. I told KJ on the call this week that that is one thing I would die to have is KJ give me a pep talk like she does the girls on beam. It just looks so intense and it clearly gets the girls really fired up to do beam. Well, she's without a doubt a master at motivation, is she not? Yes. We, you you <laughs> asked her about that. You know, what, what do they do to kind of keep things going, keep things fresh? And they have a a new motivational theme every single week. Yeah, she said she couldn't share it with us. It's, it's a team secret, but they like to change it up and beautiful series by Audrey. But yeah, she loves to change it up and talk about who they are as people, as leaders, not just as athletes. And she said it keeps them really zoned in and motivated. And clearly it's working for them. <laughs> New career high, 995 last time out for Davis. Feet jump, stack jump, very difficult. When you do a stack jump, you have to throw your head back and lose sight of the beam for a second. So it's very difficult to not wobble, but she made it look like no problem there. Justice dismount, round up, double full, stuck. Wow, what a lead off. 
how do you go up from there? <laughs> that was so impressive. <laughs> Handspring, lay out, step out. And like I said, here's that dismount round up, double full. Maybe a little bit of loose feet form in that double full if that's where they're gonna take a deduction, but wow. Calista Gamiao will lead off for the Razorbacks. Front spring, hand spring, double pike. Nicely done. Didn't move that front foot. Can't help but smile so big when she's on the floor. She just looks like she's having such a great time out there. Super unique. Second pass, round up, one and a half. Round up by Kansring, double full. Beautiful. And I love her form in the air when she does the double full. Sometimes when people do twisting scales, their feet wrap because they twist too early. But she keeps pin straight. I love it. Switch half, popa. Taking this time to really breathe before that last pass. Getting the crowd involved. Brown quick answer, double tuck. Wow! Coach Weaver is fired up for that routine. Again, such a solid lead off on both routines that she does. They're happy with that. Wow, that was, <laughs> that was amazing. Round of back hand swing, double pike. Maybe the slightest foot movement there. A little bit too much juice for that second pass, like I said. The form, everything. So nice. Ava is capable of a 9925 on this event. Handspring layout. No problems there. She's coming after Audrey's 9925, so just able to build from there. Catley front aerial. You can tell she's almost talking to herself up there, telling herself her cues. Breathing, beat jump, another split jump, stack jump. First time this year in the lineup for Sigfeld on beam. And sticks the landing. Back hands from Gainer full. She should be so proud of herself. Gets a big cut from Coach Kindler. Back hands from play out, step out. No movement. Not gainer full. Wow. And her team is fired up. They should be so proud. And, and they, it's a perfect 10 oh for Sigfeld. <laughs> wow. Well, now it's important for Haley to really keep her focus, but wow, to go 10 second up, that is, yeah, that's impressive. Front layout through, double tuck, stuck. Wow. <laughs> that so stole the crowd's happening. attention there's, right back. There's so much happening. Switch half, Copa to Shushinaba. Just that last pass here.
back for handspring, double pike. Gets that chest up. Great routine from Haley. The score should build on Calista's 985. Great job. And way to stay focused going into that first pass when a tennis flash from the other side as a freshman. Again, that's stuff that they're going to have to get used to in postseason. It's going to be loud and it's going to be chaotic. But she did a great job at zoning in on that routine. Wow. The other crazy thing is the rest of this beam lineup is all capable of going 10. Bowers, who just turned in her first 10 of the year on floor in the previous rotation. The beam is the one event in her career that she has never turned in a perfect 10 on, but we know that she's more than capable of doing it. Yep. Career high of a 9.975. And she dances a lot before her first skill, but you can tell she's really getting that confidence up there, zoning in before her skill. No issues. Split leap to switch half. And some difficult dance down on the beam. It is a requirement that a certain part of your body other than your feet touches the beam at some point in time. So she did it in a very difficult way, but it's nice to see someone do some unique dance up on the beam. Just the dismount, round off, double full with a stick. Now she did lose leg form in that double full. I don't think it'll be a 10, but what we're seeing tonight is very possible that they could throw another one right there. Another look here. See that round off double full. You can tell her legs kind of come apart so they're not glued together. The judges should take that deduction, but still that routine should go 9-9 nine nine plus. That last floor routine for Arkansas is Haley Klein, a new career high 9-9-0. Nine nine And I, I love Maddie's routine. Fran from front double full. She makes that pass look so easy every time, and it is one of the higher levels of difficulty. Fran from front double full. And I love how precise she is on this dance. Switch ring, switch half. Gearing up for that next pass, round off one and a half, front lay, so nicely done. Sometimes she can go a little bit crooked on that layout, which is a deduction, but she was straight on the corner that time. I love how exact she is on the music. Justice Rudy, last pass, front handspring, one and a half. Wow, what a great routine. That should definitely build off of that last 9-9. Coach Weaver is calling for the 10. Jones, a career high 995, and that, that 10 is something she's been knocking on the door of.
wolf jump. It's an easy jump skill, but she does it so nicely. Oh, just a slight bobble. You could tell her back foot was a little bit off the side, causing her to bobble. Full turn. Switch leap, split, or er, straddle jump, excuse me. She needs to really zone in here. Back hands ring, careful. Nicely done. Way to finish it up after that bobble. Didn't let it phase her throughout the rest of her routine. You see, that back leg was just really off. Good for her for not letting it take her completely off the beam and finishing up very strong. Somebody will be watching compete for a national championship at the end of the season. Came in with the third best average in the nation on beam. Arkansas program record a couple of weeks ago on the floor exercise, 49.675. Front leg through to double tuck. Phew! She gets that chest up so nice. The crowd's really getting into this routine. Switch side, Popa. Last week she had a 9.85, so she's looking to build. Maddie Jones is a 9.9 before her. So she can dial in this last pass. The score is going to be a big one. Double park. Stuck. Last pass. Wow. She has just been really dialing in and focusing on these routines. <laughs> that was that was huge. That was awesome. You want to get some goosebumps. Watch that last pass <laughs> yeah. again. Here's that front lay through to double tuck. Like I said, very difficult to do. Here's that last pass. I, I have goosebumps. Round my hands right. Double pike. Just incredible. Sticks it. Let's see what the judges are going to do with it. It's one of those where you're assuming a little bit of a step and it just never came, nope, just stayed nope. frozen. <laughs> just dialed it in. Great stuff from Smith. Cal Lavaster's been 9-9 or better on beam in nine straight meets. She is money in this event. Back handspring, layout step out. She was slightly off, but. I hear some boos from the crowd for Leah Smith's score. We'll have to see what it is. It ties her season high of 9925, but they wanted better. Good for Kat for really focusing in on this Beamer team. Ariel, you can tell she. Looks a little bit off on all these skills, but she really finishes with those arms. Has to not bobble. Just the dismount. Back hands bring gainer full. Oh, I thought she was holding on to it. Just really needed to absorb. a great beam rotation going for Oklahoma. Handspring layout. Just that dismount. She wanted the stick so bad. But she was a little bit on her heels. Had to take the step. This crowd knows their gym backs. They know that this team closes strong on floor. Spots three through six have been the same all year. 
and Lauren Williams and Frankie Price who will close it out. Both top 10 in the nation in this event. This crowd knows it. And this is just a treat. She was hyping up the crowd. My heart rate is at 148 right now. <laughs> I am so hyped up for this. Full in, stuck, huge. But now she can't get ahead of herself. When she hits that first pass, she still needs to make sure her leaps are good throughout her two passes. And she knows she can get this crowd really involved. Round off, one and a half, front lay. Beautifully done. And I know what she's going for right now. So she needs to make sure she stays as focused as possible, doesn't overthink this last pass. And her signature worm. And she's really playing into the hype right now. Just this last pass, double tuck. Wow! They're calling for a 10. Her team is going crazy. Wow, this place is going to explode. Does anybody work the crowd quite like no, Lauren no. Williams does? She, before, during, and after the routine, that was insane. I am shaking, that was just awesome. Here's that first pass, full in. Just knows exactly where she is. Second pass, one of her better passes, took that front layout up. And that last pass. Oh. Speaking of 10, Reagan Smith. The crowd is not happy with that. 9925. But they're in for a good one with Reagan's routine here. Handspring layout step out. Can she go for a fifth 10? In a row, <laughs> not ever, in a row, which is even more impressive. Front aerial, dances right out of it. The first OU gymnast to do that in any event, those four perfect tens you mentioned. Straddle half, back handspring swing down. Very difficult connection. Full turn, no problems there. Just the dismount, back handspring, gain or full. Ah, uh, won't be a 10 today. Took that hop in place, you can tell she was almost going too hard to get that 10. Won't be one, but definitely still another 9-9 plus routine. What an impressive streak by Reagan Smith. Frankie is also capable of a ginormous score here. She just needs to focus in on this first landing. Double A. Wow, that was the best double A I think I've ever seen her do. Sometimes her chest will be down. Sometimes she kind of tries to hide it with a dance. But wow, chest up, great landing. Now she gets to play to the crowd for a while. Switch side, Popa Popa, huge. <laughs> she got a little smirk out of the judge there. She was trying to play up to her.
Five event titles on floor this year for Frankie Price, most on the team. Just this last pass, front full, front lay. She needs to take it up. Wow! I know I sound like a broken record, but that was the best I've seen Frankie do her floor routine. Hold that last thing. Arkansas with that might very well have just turned in a new program record on floor. Double A. That was the nicest I have ever seen her do that first pass. And then that front full, front lay. Oh. There it is. They had what they wanted at first. <laughs> Looks like a 995. Looks like one judge threw it. The other judge went 99. The crowd saw that 10 first and they were ready to explode yeah. looking for <laughs> Arkansas's first ever perfect 10. Front aerial shuttle jump. Very nicely done by Amy. Good series. You could tell she was a little off. Just needed to be confident on that landing. Very unique lead series. Pitch kick to straddle half. Cartwheel, Ganner full, stuck to smell. That was a very nice routine and exhibition for Amy. Again, Coach Kindler's just trying to play around with lineups a little bit, see where people are comfortable and see where they can maybe rest some people going into postseason. Tammy Weaver on the floor exhibition now. And this is one routine that I am really looking forward to the day that she can crack that lineup. It is such fun dance. Front front hands for double pike. Wow. Really opens it up, finishes it strong. up for that next pass, round up, one and a half, front lay. <laughs> Playing along with her teammates on the sideline. <laughs> Just that last pass, round up, hand from double tuck. That was one of the best routines I've seen Tammy do. Like I said, I'm excited for the day that this cracks the lineup. And it shows Coach Weaver, she has some depth on floor. Well, puts an end to what was <laughs> an electric environment on the floor for the Razorbacks. Stay tuned. We'll back to wrap things up from Fayetteville. 198.3 for OU to stay unbeaten. Back in Fayetteville, final score. Top ranked Oklahoma stays unbeaten 198.3 to 197.275. Josh Haley along with Sidney Limmerhart and 
This place had a lot of energy, a lot of loud moments throughout the night, and kind of had that postseason atmosphere we were looking for. Yeah, it was insane the whole entire meet. The crowd never let up, and like we kept saying, these teams are really going to try to use this to go to postseason. The tens that we saw, the crazy booing during the middle <laughs> of a routine. Um, it was just, it was a great meet by both teams, and they can definitely use this going into the postseason. Let's take a look at a couple of tens that we saw tonight. Ava Sigfeld. That was a beautiful Beamer team. Great to see her get her first 10. Second up in the lineup, that is so difficult to do. And I think she even shocked herself, but that just shows you how insane the depth is at Oklahoma Gymnastics. And the first time in the beam lineup this year, and then Jordan Bowers on the floor. Yeah, she, like I said, has such an intensity to her floor routine. She, we saw her capable of 10s the past couple years, this being her first one this year. She should be definitely pleased with her performance tonight. And let's go Jordan, down to Emerson Burris. Your first floor, or your first 10 on floor this season. Tell me about the mindset. How'd you execute that? Yeah, really just working on the details this season and all those little things that, you know, create the big picture. So really just honed in on those today and just made it come. So looking ahead to postseason, first Big 12 championships, then road to nationals. What do you need to do to get there? Again, working on the details. You know, we still have so much little things to improve on and that we can really just work on those and create the big, the big picture and really just put it all out there. And we're super excited. We're really excited to host Big 12s and be the last Big 12, so that's really exciting. Congrats on a great night. Thanks so much. Thank you. Guys. Thanks, Emerson. It was a fun one indeed. Oklahoma, top-ranked team in the nation coming into Fayetteville. And both teams had some good things to build on as the regular season rapidly comes to a close. But Arkansas will be rocking again this Friday when they take on Nebraska. For Emerson Burris and Sydney Limmerhurt and our entire crew, I'm Josh Haley saying thanks for joining us and good night from Northwest Arkansas.